Now, uh, telomeres are uh, short say, are, are well shortening sections of DNA that do not code. They're actually repeating section. They're actually repeating units. They have the same sequence repeated over and over again. Uh, because DNA replication results in a loss of a short section of, uh, of nucleotides at the end of a chromosome every time you replicate that DNA strand, uh, a telomere has a protective function. We talked about telomeres as part of the chromosome a few uh, in the previous video. Um, and effectively what what's going on here is this is sort of like the uh, aglet in the tip of in your shoelace. This is protecting your DNA from getting frayed and torn up at the edges. So this gets snipped off so that your coding DNA doesn't have to be. So they're made of repeating sequences of nucleotides that vary between species. Now, the role of telomeres, um, they serve to prevent the ends of chromosomes from being degraded. Now, without telomeres, the ends would appear to be damaged to the cell's repair machinery, enzymes. Uh, and that means that the ends could end up being joined to other chromosomes, and you would end up with uh, uh, chromosomal abnormalities in the cells, and that could lead to other downstream problems. Now, the overall effect being that telomeres protect genes and their int the integrity of their genetic material, especially to allow for continued replication, especially, uh, especially because they allow for continued replication. Now, uh, there are, it's surprisingly hard to find good, uh, good resources here on YouTube, of uh, high level resources about telomeres. Uh, that aren't trying to sell you a product. So um, I'm just a fan of TED Talks, so I'll go there. But um, yeah, you don't, don't, don't leave this video for too long. You, you should come back. All right. So terms to recall. I want you to remember this from Baby Bio, which is the non-AS level curriculum biology that you took before here, hopefully. Um, a tissue is any of the distinct types of material which animals or plants are made, consisting of specialized cells and their products. Mitosis is the division of the nucleus to create two genetically identical nuclei. And when you pair mitosis with cellular division and cytokinesis, uh, the result is genetically identical daughter cells. Now, stem cells, they divide throughout your life, and they create stem cells and differentiated cells. Now, we're about to talk about death, so trigger warning, I guess. Um, we're also about to talk about growth and healing and reproduction. But before you get too excited, uh, it's not that kind of reproduction. So uh, all of this is going to be at the multicellular level, not at the organismal level. So as we go through, I want you to keep in mind that these are thousands of cells at work here. And most of the time, we're not talking about the entire organism. But as a, uh, to dip into the territory of memes real quick, this is kind of how a damaged cell behaves. We're all gonna die. It's, it's, it's over. It's, I'm just, uh, oh lordy lordy. I just like this quote. I do not cling to life sufficiently to fear death. Um, so let's just take a moment to examine what I mean by that. Cells will respond to injury in two ways. Both of those ways are Greek. Greek tragedies. So necrosis is Greek for death or the act of dying. So here a cell is killed before it has a chance to sort of take care of its business and put its affairs in order. Apoptosis, which I pronounce it apoptosis. Yes, it's spelled apoptosis, but that sounds like some kind of um, breakfast strudel, so we're not going to use that term. We're going to call it apoptosis. Um, Either one may be correct because the ancient Greeks aren't really around to tell us otherwise, but I'm going to go with apoptosis because I sound less silly. Now, apoptosis is Greek for falling off. This is often referred to as programmed cell death. Now, with a name like that, um, you can pretty much surmise that this is going to be the standard fate of cells that are going to be worn out and tired or somehow injured, but not to the point of being killed outright. 
this is the getting their affairs in order that I was talking about, that necrosis doesn't allow them to do. So, this image, we have a normal cell. And down this path, we have necrosis. And down this path, we have apoptosis. Necrosis, we have some kind of injury to the cell. We'll start to see these little blebs, B-L-E-B -E blebs. They'll form on the outside. And that is the signal that this cell is probably going to pop like a little bit of a, well, a pimple. And so enzymatic digestion and leakage of cellular contents will occur because the cell membrane has been compromised and the contents of that cell will leak out into the extracellular space. Now this is not a good thing because as we discussed about organelles, the organelles exist in order to um, concentrate enzymes to increase rates of reaction and also to wall off dangerous enzymes like the things in lysosomes lytic enzymes and the like. Now, these are all leaking out into the extracellular space where there's proteins and stuff, stuff that you really don't want damaged. And there's all sorts of internal workings of the cell that are not supposed to be made public, as it were. And so now we have a problem. Internal stuff from the cell is going to cause damage to the extracellular environment, the neighbor cells the neighbors are going to be injured by this cell's death. So there goes the neighborhood is apropos here. Let's talk about apoptosis for a moment though. For a little bit of time, this actually looks worse. But this is all part of the process. The cytoskeletal elements are actually being pulled and maneuvered in this way. These blebs aren't forming because of breakdown. They're forming because of, uh, uh, because of, Let's see, what's the word I want to say? Puppeteer strings. So the puppet strings are being pulled and certain organelles are being moved and shifted into position and all these different organelles are being broken up into more manageable chunks and you'll get individual apoptotic bodies. Apoptotic bodies are little bite-sized chunks of cells ready for phagocytosis by cleanup, stuff, uh, by cleanup cells like macrophages and the like. So these apoptotic bodies are the breakdown of this cell in an organized, clean manner that does not leak intracellular contents to the extracellular space, causing damage to neighborhood cells. So we'll have our phagocytes, like our, like our, like our macrophages, come along and engulf these apoptotic bodies, and then they will digest those fragments. So this is sort of like the cell is sacrificing itself for the greater good and returning all of its organelles to the community for redigestion and redistribution. It's giving back. It's really very philanthropic of this apoptotic cell. Or, you know, you can dress up that uh, you can dress up that philanthropy all you can dress it up as philanthropy all you want. It's still dying. Anyway. Now that's death. We've now talked about death at the cellular level. That wasn't that depressing, I hope. So let's talk about how we, how we fix ourselves, how we, how we repair ourselves. We have two real um, mechanisms for this. We have repair and regeneration. We'll talk about repair first, because it's quick, um, literally and figuratively. Uh, in repair, a damaged tissue is replaced by scar tissue, which is typically a tough, non-functional tissue, but the problem here is that when you have two different types of tissue, you have healthy tissue, scar tissue, and healthy tissue, the connections between healthy tissue and scar tissue are not that strong. So you can actually tear scar tissue more easily than you can healthy tissue. Uh, it's actually weaker. But scar tissue is tough, but it doesn't do its job. So if you're replacing internal organs with scar tissue, like your liver, um, you're not going to have your liver be doing its job. It got repaired real fast, but it's being repaired real fast. It's like slapping a Band-Aid on a crisis. It'll hold it for a time, but that's only going to make the problem worse in the long run. Regeneration, though, that fixes it, but it takes a real long time. In regeneration, you have the presence of stem cells nearby enough to that tissue 
to divide and create new, healthy, differentiated tissue that is identical to the old functional tissue before it was damaged. And it functions exactly the way the old tissue did because the old tissue was made exactly the same way from stem cells that divided and differentiated. So the difference between regeneration and repair is the access to stem cells and the time frame. So the presence of healthy stem cells nearby will allow for regeneration to occur. Now, growth. Growth is this mixture. It's this uh, net effect. You can have net positive and net negative growth. Your tissues are always in a constant state of apoptosis and regeneration. You're always building new cells, and you're always having old cells degrade and die off and uh, apoptose, if that's the appropriate way of stating that verb, or conjugating that verb. Eh, this is a science class, not an English class. Blast me in the comments for that all you like. I'm not watching. I'm not reading them. All right. Okay, I'm hungry. All right. Your genes are what determine where this is happening and when. And for everything to go according to plan, every single cell has to have a copy of the DNA. They all have to be an identical copy. All right. Should I start calling the comments the doobly-doo? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Thanks, Peanut Gallery. Okay. Are you going to edit this out? We will now. <laughs> oh, <it's fine. laughs>